Pokemon Journeys episode 68 ushered in the return of Ash's old friend and rival, Gary Oak, someone who's been missing in the anime for 12 years. And while this episode did a lot to focus on Ash and Gary's friendship and displaying just how far they've come, the episode also focuses a lot on Go and how Gary will be in play to be a rival to him. But does this feel unearned or out of place? This is what we're here to discuss. It seems weird, right? Gary is far more experienced than Go is. Surely Go is at a major disadvantage, but that's the beauty of it. Gary is so far ahead of Go that it will prompt major growth for Go to catch up. When introduced to Go, he says he wants to learn how skilled he was and needs to be as good as him. When he's leaving, he says a trainer at Go's level can't do well on Project Mew. These provocations are done with a purpose. It's Gary's way of lighting a fire under Go. And with someone so much higher than him prompting that growth, Go was soar to heights he didn't think he would ever be able to. It certainly becomes apparent that Go is below Gary and Ash's skill level in a Moltres battle, as they're able to stay competitive with it. But the main focus of this match is just how Blastoise manages the battle, even overshadowing Ash's battle with a Legendary. Go does absolutely nothing to it, and it takes Pikachu and Electivire to protect Go Cinderace from Moltres' attack. In a way, this proves that Gary is up for joining Project Mew, as we find out that this is his trial for it, and he's done most of the action. And that maybe Go really wouldn't be ready for it if he did want to enter. But let's talk about some parallels. Something both Gary and Go have done is capture a lot of Pokemon. Now yeah, in the original series, a huge part of the journey the Pallet Town trainers had is catching Pokemon, in addition to the badge quest. When we get a check up on him before the league, we found that he's caught over 200 Pokemon, and that's only in Kanto. Of course he got new Pokemon in Johto. He got Electivire and Sinnoh. And Go, of course, wants to catch every Pokemon to work his way to Mew. And what does Go tell Mew to? You can come to understand a Pokemon by catching it. He wants to learn about Pokemon. He wants to understand every Pokemon. Gary wants to research everything about Pokemon, which means he has to research Mew. Much like Go, they both want to come to an understanding of Mew being the centres of their goals. It's absolutely insane just how much Go and Gary line up with each other. A more minor point is that Gary is working his way up to becoming a researcher inspired by his grandfather. Meanwhile, Go had the seeds planted to become a researcher by the person who would go on to become Gala's professor, Sonya. Go didn't flat out reject the suggestion, he just knows he wants to catch Pokemon first. Their endgame certainly have the potential to be very similar, which again, makes them an interesting set of characters to be competing with each other. And in another similar way, they've both arguably been under the tutelage of a professor, with Gary studying with Rowan in Diamond and Pearl, and Go being a research assistant to Professor Sakuragi. As the first old character to make multiple returns, as we know he'll be returning in this week's episode 71, Gary has so much potential to push Go forward and really help nurture his growth. Seeing how he'll handle being a rival in a non-battle oriented role promises to be very interesting as it's unlike anything he's done before, and instead of dredging up the same old conflict with Ash, it's a new and unique way of giving relevance to a loved character. I'm so excited that Gary is back, his last appearance in Diamond and Pearl left a lot to be desired, and he came back in the best way possible after 12 years. The fact he will spur on growth in Go is so smart to me.